Welcome to the CIS 120 Access Project for Cochise College. You'll need Access 2007 or 2010 to complete this project. You'll also need this file, 120access.accdb, which is compatible to with either Access 2007 or 2010. My name is Klein Namuo. I'm the CIS Department Chair at Cochise College. The project background is that you've been hired by Dream Cruises Hawaii, a tour boat operator in Honolulu, Hawaii, as the executive director of their foundation. The foundation is heavily involved in ocean conservation efforts. Your first project is to create an access database to track and manage donor and recipient information. When you're done, you will submit just one single access file to your instructor. Good luck. Now, welcome to part one creating tables and forms. Your task in this step is to add a table and a form to the existing Dream Cruises Hawaii Foundation database. Our first step is to open 120 access and you'll see that we've got one file, excuse me, one table over on the left hand side. We're going to create a second table called recipients with four fields. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and click on the Create tab, and we'll go straight into the Table Design mode, or the Design view, rather than the Table view. So you'll notice Table Design is going to give us a few more options. And you'll see on your Project Instructions sheet that you've got a field called ID. And I'm going to hit the letter A here. The data type will be Auto Number. We want to choose the correct data type for our database to ensure that we get the correct information in the database. For example, if we ask for someone's phone number, we don't want them to type in blue, for example. Um, so in this case, we're going to uh, go ahead and create, uh, select auto number, which will automatically number each new record in this database. Okay, we've got a field properties area down at the bottom. We won't do anything with that for now. We've got a second field called recipient name and the data type here is going to be text which makes a lot of sense. The field size will be 20 and that's our first uh, experience with the field properties area down at the bottom. We'll play around with a few more options. I'm clicking in field name a third uh, row down and amount dispersed And the data type in this case, according to our instructions, should be the currency data type. Right? We want it to display money. And should not allow for values of less than 5,000, which is the minimum awarded amount. So we're linking donors and recipients in our database, in our foundation database. Uh, in order to restrict uh, entry, for this particular field, we'll need a validation rule down at the bottom. And the validation rule will be greater or equal to 5,000. So if anyone tries to enter something less than 5,000, uh, they should receive some sort of message. And in fact, why don't we take it a step further? Our validation text should say minimum awarded amount is five thousand dollars okay so that's not in your project instructions just something uh, a little bit extra now our fourth field name should be phone number so I'll go ahead and type in phone number hit the tab key and there's no real phone number field here so we've got to use something called an input mask the data type will be text input mask down at the bottom I'm gonna hit these three dots and we're going to go ahead and save this table. We're being forced to save it. We're going to call it recipients. So we will have two tables in our database. We'll click OK. Now there's no primary key defined. In each table, uh, each record will have a unique field. For example, as students at the college, what might your unique identifier be? Um, hopefully you've said your C number. All right, as a United States citizen, your primary key would most likely be 
um, your social security number. So it's a unique identifier in all tables. We want to create a primary key now. We'll say yes and Access is smart enough to place a little key here next to the ID field. Now we're back to the input mask. We'll select phone number and we're going to accept all the defaults here. I could go through the, uh, the options but it's not necessary. We'll hit finish and we're on to uh, step number six. Now step number six asks us to save this database so I'll hit file, the file tab. I'll click on save database as and we'll say do you want to save or access is asking us do we want to save all database objects tables forms reports queries we've only created a couple of tables but we will say yes we want to save changes to the design of table recipients we will also say yes maybe we should have done that before and just hit save that's okay so we're going to call this our last name hyphen first initial so we'll say n-a-m-u-o hyphen c and we don't need to add the extension access will do that for us automatically you want to make sure you remember where you save it so that when you submit it to your instructor um, you'll remember where to find it I'm going ahead and saving it in my documents I'll click save and I've got one in there from a previous uh, class I'll hit yes you probably won't get that message and there we go so we've created a second table uh, we've got a table for donors who give the foundation money and then we've got a table for recipients who receive the money um, that's donated okay I just hit enable content on that uh, security warning there now We've created a recipients table. I'll go ahead and double click on it so you can see it on the right hand side. You can see that we've created um, a table with four fields, the fields that uh, we typed in in the design view. I'm just kind of expanding. I'll just double click here. So what we'd like to do at this point is we could enter information directly into this um, table, but we want to come up with a more user friendly way to do that. And in order to do that, we're going to have to uh, learn about one of the other four pillars of access. Tables, queries, forms, and reports. We're going to create a form. And the form will be a more easy to use interface for the database. So the idea is um, we want to make our database easy to use for anyone entering information. And step number seven in our project instructions wants us to create a form for the newly created recipients table okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight into we're just gonna hit form and access 2007 and access 2010 are extremely helpful because we've got this thing called layout view and in layout view we can uh, rearrange fields uh, pretty easily you know move fields up and down and kind of move uh, labels up and down as well okay um, so we won't actually mess around with the default <laughs> we've got our ID field up at the top recipient name amount dispersed and phone number okay so we're going to accept the default in this case and we'll go ahead and in the upper left hand corner hit save access prompts us to name the form smart enough to know that we're going to want to name it recipients and we'll go ahead and do that we'll hit OK over on the left hand side we've got the recipients form now uh, and what we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, close down actually what we can do is take a little shortcut here we can go and switch to form view right now we're in layout view switch to form view and you'll see that we've got um, our four fields so the recipients form is tied directly to the recipients table it just gives database users an easier way to interact with the database okay 
Uh, so the next step is we're going to use the form to enter five new records into the database. Use yourself as the first record and then we'll save. At this point I'm going to just do the first one so you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, amount dispersed, let's just say 4,000. You'll see that according to the database, I mean we created a validation rule that says that field needs to be greater than 5,000. So I attempted to enter something less, it's giving us uh, an error message, and we'll say okay, well he, he uh, was awarded the minimum amount. Um, so we used the uh, greater than or equal to 5,000 as well. And the phone number field, we'll say, we'll just start typing in numbers and you'll notice that it's um, filling it in or, or formatting it correctly because we used an in input mask and that's actually my office number there. Okay. All right, uh, so that's the first one. I just hit the tab key on my keyboard. You've got some navigation buttons in the lower left hand corner here. So once you're done entering all five records, uh, you would then save this to the database and that would complete step one. Okay, so uh, congratulations, you made it to the end of part one. I'm just going to go ahead and finish it off by hitting save in the upper left hand corner. And uh, that's it.